was the director of the Red Army's general office. At the founding of the new China, he was the first ambassador to the Soviet Union, and he was the first minister of the International Department of the Central Committee of the CPC. With the help of his wife, Zhu Zhongli, and those who knew him personally, we continue unfolding our roadmap of the new China's emerging diplomatic mission. suffered the ravages of war and natural disaster were again filled with joy and happiness. Leaders of the party central committee frequently interacted with representatives of the people of Beijing. The preparatory work of the PRC's diplomacy was underway, and Wang Jiaxiang, by now well regarded for his experience, patriotism, and diplomatic skills, naturally emerged as a leader. Wanda At that time, the Soviet Union was China's first and most important friend, and at that time, the Soviet Union played an important role in the international community. It was, indeed, to have a huge influence on China's future. So, in the 1947 这个苏联方面的反应并不是让我们感觉到很受鼓舞当然这样到了就是部长会议主席米高扬啊秘密访问河北的西外婆他当时呢他是负有这个斯大林交代的这个政治任务。The task involved the developmental assistance to the new China, especially in respect of foreign policy. In March of 1949, the second plenary session of the 7th Central Committee was held in Xibaipo, where the diplomatic principle of clean up the house before inviting guests was established. In Xibaipo, Chairman Mao told Mikoyan the first ambassador stationed in the U.S. would be Wang Jiaxiang. Mikoyan was not surprised. To Mikoyan, that role belonged to Wang. In May of 1949, Wang accompanied Liu Shaoqi on a secret visit to the USSR to discuss issues relating to the development of the People's Republic of China. Negotiations involved loans, discussion of borders and territories, armaments, and the military generally. Wang suggested that Liu provide a written report to ensure and document the comprehensiveness and depth of the negotiations. During the three-month visit, Wang assisted Liu in achieving the Sino-Soviet Loan Agreement. They also returned to China with nearly 100 Soviet experts. On September 21, 1949, the CPPCC was held in Beijing. The three diplomatic principles, the one-side policy, the make-a-fresh-start policy, and the clean-up-the-house-before-inviting-guests policy, were written into the common program, so beginning a new chapter in China's diplomatic history. On that day, Wang, accompanied by the cultural delegation, traveled all the way from the Soviet Union. 
The man standing beside him was S. L. Tsvensky, Soviet Council General to China. Zhongyi 中华人民共和国成立The letter Mr. Tsikvensky translated was perhaps the single most important piece of international news of the day. 第二天早上,无限间,王博说是苏联成长中华人民共和国。The news electrified the world, as well as delegates to the World Peace Conference. Three days later, Wang Jiaxiang was appointed China's first ambassador to the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union learned soon thereafter that the British government was poised to recognize the People's Republic of China very soon as well. In order to ensure that they were the first country to affirm its diplomatic priority, the Kremlin appointed Luo Shen as ambassador to China. And on October 10, 1949, Luo arrived in Beijing. He was warmly welcomed by Zhou Enlai and accompanied by Wang Jiaxiang. On October 16th, Chairman Mao received the nation's first diplomatic recognition from Foreign Ambassador Luo Shen. This is the most famous railway station in Russia and the terminal station of the international train from Beijing to Moscow. On October 31, 1949, Ambassador Wang Jiaxiang and his colleagues were well received here. Fifty years have passed. Liu Zheng, the youngest attendant to the ambassador, is 84. The memorable days and glorious achievements of their diplomatic work still make the aged man tingle with excitement. <laughs> This was the first time that the national flag was raised in a foreign country. It represented the birth of a new nation a republic baptized in the blood of innumerable thousands of patriots, a state of 450 million. In 2005, newly released archival material from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs included a telegram from Wang Jiaxiang to Zhou Enlai. Dated November 14, 1949, it tells of the whole procedure of the reciprocal presentation of both countries' diplomatic credentials. Every detail is elaborated. The newly built Chinese embassy in Moscow was short on luxury accommodations. In order to economize on outlay, the couple cut back their wages.
。他有时候招待客人，他自己拿去。Dressing provided a challenge for the couple, who naturally moved in diplomatic circles. 那个时候没有钱给我，只给两百块钱人民币。北京饭店对门十一个，是地摊。我就在那那摊子上买了两套，自己做，自己裁，自己缝。你你你白天你你你你你你这是短裙子，嗯，晚上要穿拖地的长裙。那我把这个衣服做两节，到了晚上就缝起来。那衣服完家钱还替我缝呢。那出去还人家都要看的，嗯，蛮不错的。你跳跳华尔兹也行，跳四步也行，我都跟得上。Different occasions require different clothing, but Ju didn't mind sewing dresses. Both ambassador and wife were often the wider world's introduction to the new republic, and they intended to look the part. But almost immediately after the Soviet Union's official recognition of the ruling Chinese government and the new Chinese state, the United States announced that they intended to acknowledge the defeated and exiled government of the Kuomintang. The U.S. pressed other nations not to acknowledge the existence of the new China. This formidable slight to China's status challenged Wang Jiaxiang to mediate actively in the Soviet Union. Two months later, Mao Zedong started out on his first official visit to the Soviet Union. Wang led China's embassy officials in the Soviet Union to welcome President Mao at the railway station. The Mao Zedong's first official visit to the Soviet Union. Two months later, Mao Zedong started out on his first official visit to the Soviet Union. Two months later, Mao Zedong started out on his first official visit to the Soviet Union. 除了斯大林以外的所有的苏联领导人都到车站上接了，而且他特别安排了一个仪式，就是毛主席这个专列进入这个莫斯科这个这个车站以后啊，这个住非常有名的这个车站以后，他正好是十二十二点钟响，那个大钟敲响了，整个莫斯科城啊，他当时的莫斯科城很多，全城都能够听到这个。Fast forward to the 1960s, to the days of China's Cultural Revolution. Because of some mistaken ideas which impacted the party, Wang Jiaxiang was criticized. But in 1971, when China's Communist Party started to rearrange the work of veteran cadres, Wang Jiaxiang was given an opportunity to resume his career. On New Year's Eve, 1973, Wang Jiaxiang and Zhu Zhongli held a family dinner to entertain his secretary, driver, bodyguard, and batman. Before dinner, Zhu took a photo for Wang Jiaxiang and the others in attendance. Nobody suspected that this would be Wang Jiaxiang's last photograph. January 25, 1974. After a heavy snow, Beijing streets are very quiet. This day, the third day of 1974 on the Chinese lunar calendar, Wang Jiaxiang passed away, heart attack. At the age of 68, the life of China's first ambassador came to a quiet end.